All right, hello everybody. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm Mary Parsons. I'm basically the head of DevX at Dish Wireless. Uh, and I have my partner here, Watson, presentation partner, and we're gonna talk to you about corralling the CNFs. So who are we? I'm gonna take a, a first couple of minutes to tell you about Dish. So I think most people who know Dish know of us as a satellite TV provider, right? So developing CSP technologies in the US. What a lot of people don't know and are just now starting to learn is that we've spent the last decade building a portfolio of spectrum holdings in support of building out a wireless network. So for the last two to three years, our deployment teams have been um, architecting, building and deploying sites across the United States, thousands and thousands of them, which you can see on this map, which basically are all edge nodes of a network, right? And this is our 5G cloud native ORAN network. It's not a telco, it's not a cloud. This is a fully virtualized cloud native ecosystem that was architected by developers for developers. So this is a game changer, right? Um, the idea is that any developer in telco space or otherwise can configure and program the network to achieve their requirements in their space. With the intentions of, we've heard this word a lot today, speed, fast, improve the velocity of development, and then also open. We're, we fully support ORAN. Um, we're very committed to ORAN. We're very committed to an open environment and supporting multiple vendors. So I mentioned by developers, for developers. This is one of our internal development teams. Um, just FYI, I am their talking head today. This is their work. I didn't take, take part in any of this. So if any of your technical questions aren't answered today, come talk to me afterwards, and I'm happy to connect you with these brilliant developers so you can get your questions answered or can have more information. So this is what we're calling the NetBlocks project, short for Network Blocks. And they took on the task of coming up with our architecturally unique testing environments that can support multiple applications and test multiple applications at once. So that's us, that's Dish. Uh, just a show of hands is uh, everyone here, who, who all here has used the uh, CNF test suite or is are familiar with the CNF uh, certification? So a few of you. Okay, so the uh, CNCF, uh, CNF Test Suite is a, uh, a community, is a, a amalgamation of service providers, um, vendor partners, and CNCF uh, hosted project contributors who are uh, interested in focusing on the um, properties of high quality CNFs. And so why are we uh, using the CNCF test suite? So as I mentioned, our, our network of networks, as we're calling it, our developer ecosystem is inherently cloud native. So I won't go through all of these with you. You can read more about our 14 principles um, on our website. But number 12 here is what I'll draw your attention to. Um, so each CNF should be accompanied by test cases to validate the functionality and load test it using automated tools. We want better CNFs. We want the velocity to be able to modify CNFs. We want more CNFs. And so that, you know, at its baseline requires repeatable testing with reliable outputs that developers can compare against. Okay, so a little bit about the um, origins of the CNF test suite. Um, uh, several years ago, uh, service providers and uh, vendor partners got together and said, hey, we want to uh, have our VNFs work in Kubernetes. At uh, right about that same time, the CNCF uh, had a very successful um, uh, test suite for certifying Kubernetes, and the CNCF uh, decided to create a test suite for enabling um, or verifying uh, vendors' interoperability uh, for CNFs. So a little bit about So if you notice this uh, visual on the left, if you know what that is, I'm sorry. Um, this is the old way. 
And we're moving to this, this brilliant new way, right? So summary of what NetBlocks did. Um, they went from slow to fast. It used to take months to spin up these testing environments um, that you can test your one application in. NetBlocks is doing it in 35 minutes. They're spinning up a testing environment in 35 minutes that can test um, more than one CNF at a time. And then when the test is completed, it's destroyed. So slow to fast. Keep hearing about speed of innovation, right? Here you go. Manual to automated. Um, it would take multiple teams, multiple resources, hands-on processes, handoffs, dependencies. We're using CICD automation. It's repeatable, it's scalable, it's flexible, depending upon the CNF being tested. Restricted to open. So again, um, you, were, you were held hostage by what your vendor was providing you. Now we can have multiple vendors in one space. They were going from running approximately 10,000 tests a day to the world's your oyster, it's unlimited. You can have as many environments as you want that are scaling to your CNF and you can test as many applications in one environment as you would like. How many tests can you do a day? You tell me, right? Let's, let's see what that, that limit is for us. So common themes, right? Slow to fast, we're increasing, completely increasing um, the velocity at which developers can do their tests, get their results, and then therefore do their development work. And we're automating everything in this open environment. Okay, so as far as the, our process or the DISH process, and really any onboarding process of new CNFs for a service provider or anyone that's consuming uh, CNFs, you're first going to have to go ahead and read the documentation, obviously, and locate how to install those CNFs. So that's hopefully within Helm charts or some in-band type um, installation process. You're also going to have to locate um, how are the, uh, the install parameters in order to uh, figure out how to completely install everything. So the, for DISH, their, their process now includes uh, Lambda functions. So they're going to take from the initial onboarding process, they're going to take the information they got about the CNFs and inject that into the Lambda function. What we went ahead and, and uh, did was create an example CNF that we're going to talk a little bit uh, about more later. Uh, the, uh, we used Open 5GS and the UE Ransom um, in order to validate the, the DISH environment. Um, so uh, they also use uh, EC2 and EKS for their, their uh, Kubernetes. So after they go through and do their configuration of the Lambda functions, um, for this process, we'll talk a little bit more about later, but then, then they go ahead and review the output. So why even use Lambda functions? Lambda functions are pretty easy to set up and tear down, and you don't have any uh, lingering resources hanging around. Um, just to show of hands, who all here has used Lambda functions before? So it's you. Okay, cool. So really, the Lambda functions in this use case, they really just replace the jump box for calling the uh, CNF test suite. So one of the most often uh, repeated questions is, what's tested within the CNF test suite? Uh, so here are the categories. We have configuration that's declarative configuration, so making sure that the CNF uh, the CNF's configuration is all declarative, so using uh, config maps, operators, and declarative interfaces, so on and so forth. All of these categories are uh, pointed towards upstream projects within the CNCF. Uh, so as far as compatibility, we make sure that the CNF uh, works with uh, certified Kubernetes, so it's just uh, broadly compatible and or interoperable and then also uses a, uh, in what we call in-band deployment tools instead of like bash scripts so using something like helm or kept or something like that then as far as uh, microservices we essentially just make sure that the cnf is not a uh, tightly coupled monolithic application um, so we have a bunch of tests for doing that as far as state uh, we're, we really uh, try to uh, shun uh, 
people, um, CNFs that use local storage. So we promote using um, our managing state with custom resource definitions and uh, also just separate databases. And then you have reliability. We heard the lightning talk earlier from the litmus chaos uh, people. Uh, we essentially use them for testing, uh, doing chaos testing for uh, resilience. And then as, as far as observability, we, um, we try to make sure that the CNF externalizes its internal state so that it can be captured with metrics, logging, and tr uh, tracing, uh, hopefully in a way that's compatible with uh, open telemetry standards. And then we have security. So just like an example of uh, security would be uh, making sure that the CNFs are isolated from one another and the host. Um, some of the projects that we use that are upstream would be uh, Caverno, uh, CubeScape, uh, and maybe Falco. Um, so that's, that's really that there. As far as the example CNF that we used, um, it's open 5GS as a um, 5G core, and then the UA uh, RAN SIM uh, to send traffic to the uh, 5G core. We went ahead and open sourced uh, the configuration for the Helm charts, and um, we also created a GitHub action script. So um, if any of you want to see how to test the, the, some, a 5G core, a simple one like this, um, within uh, GitHub Actions, and spinning up a kind cluster and everything there, it's all in one place. Um, at the link at the bottom. And just your usual subjects here, as far or suspects here, as far as um, containers and pods, all of these are inside of the Kubernetes cluster. If you want to spin something up and take a look, uh, it's out there. And then now uh, for the demo, essentially, as we run this, let's see. Let's see if we can get this thing going. As this, I'm trying to get this going. So essentially, before I run this, there's really three components um, that are used within the dish process. This, it's really an early process. We um, have the event bridge, the Lambda screen, and the uh, system manager screen. Um, this, and this is gonna be a really rough demo created by Harsh. See if we can get this going. All right. So on the event uh, rule, uh, event bridge, there's a rule that at this uh, point in time just essentially schedules the lambda function. That's the CNF trigger there, and uh, that lambda function. There's a uh, CI CD pipeline that makes sure that the EC2 and EKS uh, resources are already started. Um, that's all supposed to be composable. Um, here we have the Lambda function. You have to excuse the blurring. There were some uh, email addresses and stuff on there, but essentially just the screen is just the Lambda function. It's just calling directly the um, really three commands for calling the test suite. Um, you go ahead and start it by uh, clicking the test there, and then you'll be running the test suite. Um, this would be scheduled. So within the test suite, this is a system manager screen. Essentially, uh, this is where you would see the output. Um, one thing to note about the system manager screen, there's a 48K limit. With that 48K limit um, for the CNF test suite, that's, uh, we go a little bit further than that. Um, but you can see the output here. And this would be a, something that you can um, if you're, if you're using AWS pipelines, you can go ahead and compose this with a bunch of different pipelines. Here's the output, and then uh, you can also download the uh, output so you can get the full output. 
and I'll just show that here in a second. So it's essentially would just look like something like this. If you're familiar with the test suite, essentially tells you all of the uh, tests and what pass would fail, and then you get a summary at the end. Um, and I'm just going to add in that essentially the CNF test suite, as far as the reason why you would use it, is it's really uh, intertwined, intermingled in, uh, with the upstream projects within the CNCF. So, you know, what we do at KubeCon is go out into the vendor room, go out to all the um, CNCF projects and try to get, and, and we're, we're also attending the working groups and we try to get the best project, uh, practices from the CNCF projects. So from the, the stateful work, uh, uh, working group to the, the CNI working group to the, you know, all these different um, pro upstream projects, security and so on and so forth, and we try to integrate those directly into the um, CNF test suite. I think that's it. You can bring back up the presentation as well. Yeah. I just want to point out, um, mm -hmm. our, we just wireless, our developer teams do have a GitHub up also for all of our ongoing cloud native work. So I have that link on the, the last page as well, some other links to um, Dish Wireless um, resources. For those of you who aren't familiar with the work that we're doing on our network of networks um, on this developer space, please visit those to learn more. Mm -hmm. That's all we got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Um, I got news uh, for the audience. Uh, we got the uh, audio set up for a Q&A now. Um, mm -hmm. I'll ask uh, uh, my final uh, question and then we'll improvise a bit more. Uh, we got time for that. Um, I'm uh, interested in the net blocks. Um, I couldn't quite uh, figure out uh, what that exactly is. Is it a framework? Is it a product? Uh, I tried to Google it uh, uh, briefly, yeah. but no trace Sorry of about it. That. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it's essentially the, um, the development of those testing environments. So that is the NetBlocks project, are those testing environments that can be spun up and down on demand um, in like an, an eight hour lifespan basically. Um, and so the, the team did a lot of work into not just how to develop those environments, but also the automation involved. Um, and then you know, ensuring that the t CNF test suite was being used in a reproducible standard way. So the, the, the NetBlocks term, the project in and of itself is the development of those testing environments. Thank you very much. So uh, please still stay there. Um, as I said, I'm going to, to try to improvise. We got some time and we got uh, mics and, and the speaker, so we could organize taking uh, the questions uh, from the audience. But since we missed it for the uh, first four, uh, present, for the first three presentations, I would like to invite uh, whoever of the, of the uh, presenters uh, from the previous uh, presentations is uh, in there in the room uh, to come on stage and uh, uh, we'll try to uh, do a, a Q&A round. So if Tom, uh, you are there and then Josh, I don't know if he's around. Come over. <laughs> and Roman, Dorian. So. We have now opportunity uh, to ask uh, uh, anybody of the initial uh, uh, or from the presenters uh, in the in the presentation block uh, the questions. Hopefully, you saw the presentations and you have a, uh, you have a, uh, some questions. So I can hand out the mic if you are interested in anything. Um, Um, my name is Evan Anderson. I had a question about this most recent um, dish testing stuff. I noticed that you're using um, AWS Lambda and EventBridge and so forth to orchestrate all of the testing. Um, is that configuration open source and available? Um, or is that kind of dish network secret sauce? <laughs> um. I don't think it is on the GitHub open source yet. Um, I would say stay tuned on that one. Uh, 
we are very committed to not having a whole lot of secret sauce in terms of the development work that's going on, and we are very committed to giving back to the community. And so um, this is, as you can tell, a work in progress. And like I said, um, unfortunately, the team couldn't be here with me today. But I would just say um, stay tuned to that GitHub and to a lot of our other online resources, um, and perhaps you will see it. Thanks for that question. Um, more questions? Hi, uh, thank you for the presentations. Uh, my name is Yuval, and I have a quick, with regard, quick one for uh, with regards to the uh, testing. If I take it a little bit for the direction of uh, 5G, uh, what is the method with regards to different elements? I don't know with the deployment within Dish, but in case that you're taking an open run deployment and not a G node B. Uh, so the validation of the layer two and layer one is very problematic to do it in, you know, in a COTS environment. So what is your solution for this? Meaning for the uh, uh, RU and the DU elements within 5G network, how do you make sure that everything, you know, you have a full blown of flow work that starts with the file level to the layer three uh, within your solution? And not just one element, or you take it as a G node B, and then the question about, you know, acceleration, any kind of proprietary that needs to be part of uh, this kind of deployment. Uh, right now, no. Is this no, it is. Yeah, right now we don't have a lot of uh, 5G testing, so that's. Um, something that we're supposed to be concentrating on this year. Um, definitely anything, uh, w the way that we prioritize, we look at what the community wants and then we can implement that. So if there are things that you think should be higher priority than, than others, then we can definitely get on that. Hey, thank you. We have another question over here. Um, it's uh, possible to ask questions to any of the previous presenters, <laughs> not only the last one. I will, uh, actually. Thank you. I have a question for to the Swisscom guys and also the Vodafone uh, guys here in the room. Thank for the presentations, first of all. Um, and um, uh, both you stated that you need to connect to your backbone network. Do you have software-defined networking in place and IPAM solutions which are API-driven? Or is it all IP LLDs I saw with the Swisscom, which is statically, statically configured? So if I, if I heard the question right, you were asking about um, automation of the, the software-defined networking and the IPAM and the, the kind of underlying infrastructure. Um, yeah, that, that, that was the, um, the topic for another talk um, that, that um, I think was on the wait list that I was going to do. But um, one, one thing we're doing is, is very similar to what was described by Swisscom is, you know, using automation playbooks to um, control those those automation layers, um, you know, because most of those systems, the software-defined networks, the the IPAM solutions, they all have APIs that be, can be used and controlled to get information, to put information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, you know, we use a very similar approach that Swisscom described um, and try and build that out across all our markets um, to automate that layer. Yeah, maybe in regards to our pipeline, um, we are really now working on exactly getting also this uh, more external like configuration fully automated. So one example is to do all the firewall changes throughout the Swisscom network. So there we have basically already a tool which is Tuffin, which provides such a capability. So it's really now on us to implement there the, the automation in the back to be able to dynamically, based on the, the templates we have, to uh, automatically order everything in the background. And, and for the ASEAN there, we have the open daylight, which is doing the, the cloud part. But also we are now working to do the whole transport capability also there. There is not something we can use out of the box, but we have an API we can start to use, but we need now to work on implementing there the, 
like the logic behind we need to be able to deploy our telco workload and basically then send the configuration to the different nodes which need, it, need this in the end. So we are really working there to, to get really to a, to a level where basically you just need to enter the, the parameters in, in, the, in this uh, repository and then from there it gets pushed to wherever it's needed in the end. But this needs a lot of work that basically you are able to do this really declarative and intent based. Uh, thank you. Uh, we got the time for one or two more questions. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> okay, if not, uh, thank you very much once again. It's a nice photo. I took it. I'll share it with you. Thanks again. Give them a, a full round of applause.